Today we're going to be quilting part two of this ice cream quilt. Part two of this ice cream quilt. This is a Bernina ruler. Hi there! Welcome to the second part of quilting the ice cream quilt. Today we will be quilting the cone with straight lines. And for that we're going to use this straight line, straight line ruler by Amanda, Mur Amanda Murphy. And we're going to quilt the background. And the background is quilted with double clamshells. And that is going to be quilted with circle rulers. And these might look quite small, um, but they are perfect to get this finish uh, in the background. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's get started. We're going to start with quilting these straight lines on the cone to make that structure of the cookie. And these lines have a 60 degree angle towards each other. And this ruler has a lot of angle markings on it. Um, so what that means is that when you place a ruler along a stitch line over here, that goes in this direction, then when you follow that 60 degree line, you can see it's lined up with the lines that go in this direction. So first I am going to quilt uh, lines in one direction and then use the angle marking on the ruler um, to quilt the lines in the other direction. I have marked a reference line um, on my quilt and I'm going to use that to start making lines from here. So I will be making lines from here and then move all the way to this part of the cone. So I'm just going to line up a ruler with the line that I've marked. Let's start stitching. So here we have lines in one direction quilted. Um, so you can see I did two lines next to each other. <laughs> here I uh, went a little bit away from the ruler. Um, but what I did was use the measures on the ruler. So um, the two lines that are close together are one uh, are a quarter inch apart. So when I would quilt this second line I would line up my ruler on the first one and then quilt it um, from there. And then this line, I've quilted that by lining up one of the stippled lines on one of the previous quilted lines. Um, it's not too important the distance you choose between, just make sure that two lines are close together and then there's a little gap, uh, uh, a little bit bigger gap. And then the lines are close together again. And pick your gap, close together. Well, um, yeah, that is how those lines are made. And now I'm going to use that 60 degree mark on my ruler. So for example, choose a straight line. I'm not going to use this wobbly line, but choose a straight line and then position your ruler like so. And that will show you where to uh, to quilt your line from um yeah so i think i'm going to travel back down and then start from here And that is the cone finished. So I misplaced the ruler over here a little bit, so this gap is a 
little bit bigger than this gap um, but um, it doesn't me doesn't bother me too much so uh, yeah I think that looks nice and even though I made a little wobble over here and made a little wobble over here as well in the grand scheme of things you won't really notice those mistakes uh, when your mini quilt is turned into a pillow or uh, even when it's hanging on the wall nobody will see this it's only that you will see it because you're so zoomed in and close up to your work when you're making it so don't be discouraged when uh, this happens now moving on to the clamshells so I'm just going to start at the bottom of the quilt and make these round clamshells first and then you see half smaller circle clamshells uh, underneath and I'm going to do that a second so first I'm going to fill the whole background with these rounded ones and then uh, around and then I'll do these flatter ones and I'm going to use two rulers for this this is a Bernina ruler it's actually a add-on for your ruler foot so uh, you can pop this onto your ruler foot uh, to have a three quarter inch distance from where you want to quilt well actually a, a whole inch because this inside your foot is also a quarter inch but I'm not going to use it like that I'm just going to use this as a tiny ruler and those flatter circles are made with uh, this one so a little bit bigger those are the two I'm going to use Now the first lines are uh, quilted, so we already have a clamshell and you can leave your design like this if you want to. But I like the look of the double clamshell, um, so I'm going to do that again on this quilt. For that I'm going to use a circle that has a little bit of a bigger size. So this one I used to quilt these, and now I'm going to use this one. And the tricky part here is that you need to start uh, in a corner and then end in a corner but you cannot place your ruler from corner to corner because uh, the needle is a quarter inch away from the edge of your circle so let me show you I'll just start I'll just start quilting the first line and I will show you in the second So what you need to do is um, quilt from this uh, point to that point and you're going to use your ruler for that um, but you cannot place your ruler so you place your ruler against the ruler foot but you cannot place it all the way up to this point over here because then you will miss that point by a quarter inch since your needle is a quarter inch away from the edge of the foot so you actually need to make sure that your ruler is a quarter inch away has a quarter inch gap between that point over here and the ruler 
So you can just eyeball that a little bit and then see how it goes. There we go, kind of ended in a corner. Uh, and when I miss the point, I will just go back a little bit so that I'm in a point again. And then try again. And this just takes a bit of practice uh, to get the feeling of what that quarter inch gap is. So every time you're replacing your ruler, you're trying to have that quarter inch gap over here. And that is how you get that beautiful structure of those double clamshells. So if you just want to leave it by one clamshell line, that's completely fine. But this is how you can add in that extra uh, rounded shape in every clamshell. Ta da! There it is, the whole mini quilt quilted. Love this texture, texture of these double clamshells. And in this corner over here, they were a little bit, a little bit messy because I had some smaller ones when I started out and some bigger ones. But in the grand scheme of things. Again, that's not going to be something that's really going to stand out. So just go with it. Uh, if you're really bother bothered by it, of course you can unpick, um, yeah, unpick your stitches when you're quilting. But uh, <laughs> I'm not both bothered by it at all. And here's the back of the ice cream. So lovely white lines on that blue background. But again, like I said in the previous video, if you don't want everything to show this well on the back, just go with a print, uh, print fabric on the back or um, use your bobbin thread in the same color uh, as your back, uh, backing fabric. So that's it, part two of the ice cream mini quilt, all quilted. I think this was a really fun one to quilt using the straight line ruler, uh, the straight ruler, quilting some straight lines and using the circle ruler in a few different ways. Um, yeah, lovely quilt to practice your ruler work on. If you want to make this ice cream mini quilt and practice your ruler work, you can hop over to the Shubridu web shop to get your kit or can get the foundation paper beading pattern for this mini quilt and also the rulers by Amanda Murphy uh, so the, the set of five different sized circle rulers I have in my shop and also this straight ruler is there and a lot of rulers by uh, Angela Walters so uh, if you want to start using rulers, doing ruler work or want to make this mini quilt hop over to the shop to get your kit or your rulers and uh, I would love to see what you make so if you're going to try this please do make sure to tag me if you're posting on Instagram or send me an email with a picture I would love to see uh, your version of this ice cream mini quilt that's it for this week's video thank you so much for watching and joining in and I hope to see you again next week bye bye